I'm one of those guys in the business. I'm incredibly passionate about professional wrestling. Have been since I was four years old. I love professional wrestling. But I do this to pay my bills. This is how I make my living. This is how I feed my kids and, my, and, and, and lavished my ex-wife. Um, I don't do this as a hobby. I, I probably would have as a kid. But now that I made my career at this, this is what I do to make my living. My mortgage payment at that time, Andrew, was $496 a month. And I lived in a very small town that everybody knew everybody's business. If I, we didn't have enough money in the bank account to make that mortgage payment. Had I not made that month's mortgage payment, the rumors would have started swirling around town that I had a mistress or a second family on the road or was doing drugs or God knows what else, you know. And uh, when I tried to explain that to Vince, he kept saying to me, just, just hang in there. It's going to get better. And I said, Vince, you know, I, I went on and on and on. This was at the Meadowlands. And uh, I kept trying to get him. I know he had given Dustin Rhodes a $10,000 advance on his salary. And that's really all I w really would have wanted. Had he got, given me that, I'd have been fine. Uh, I wasn't asking for special treatment. And I wasn't asking to be paid a million dollars a year or, or any specific number. I wanted to be able to pay my bills with what I was doing. If I was going to be on the road 28 days a month away from my wife and my friends and my family, uh, I damn well wanted to be compensated for that. And he, after an hour or so, he kept just saying it over and over, repeating that. I, I promise it's going to get better. I promise it's going to get better. And after an hour, I said to him, is that all you're going to say? And he said, yeah, but, but I'm, I'm just telling you, please, hey, please hang in there. I promise it's going to get better. And uh, I said, well, Vince, I don't know what else to say, except I can't afford to work anymore. I'm putting my notice in. And when I said that to him, he looked at me like I had a third eyeball. Like I was completely insane. And uh, when he realized I was serious, he started, you know, raising his voice. And, you know, Vince tries to like to, likes to try to intimidate. And I don't intimidate easy, uh, in fact, at all. I'm, you know, that, that screaming and yelling stuff does nothing to me. If anything, it just stiffens my spine even more. And uh, he said, uh, you know, so you know, I've got over a million dollars wrapped up in this character, in the launch of this character. And I started laughing. I said, where? Because it sure as hell isn't in pay. And, uh, and it sure as hell wasn't in that silly outfit he put me on, because that was the retread of the body Donnas and probably about 10 other guys before that, the, the, the killer blue singlet for the heel. You like, still yeah. have that ring worn? Uh, uh, I, yeah, I've got all that stuff somewhere, shoved in the basement of my house somewhere. Probably um, got a pretty penny. There's a lot of collectors out there that would love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's over. I'm never pretty penny. Uh, not much history behind that. But, uh, and that was, was, you know, how the, and then he wanted me to work a four month notice. I said, I can't afford to work a four month notice for you. I'll give you two weeks. He said, three months. I said, I'll give you two weeks. He said, two months. I said, I'll give you one week. And that's when we settled on about four weeks. And uh, the last I worked, the final week I worked for him was in, uh, was Thanksgiving week, 96. Uh, I wrestled Monday Night Raw that, that year. That, back then they were doing one hour tape, one hour live, one hour tape. I was to be the first match on the live show at nine o'clock with Scott Razor. And uh, about 15, 20 minutes before the top of the hour, Davey Boy Smith was in the ring and went to head, but I remember Davey would stomp with both feet. And when he did, he sank up right up to his knees, <laughs> went right through the mat. And uh, 20, 30 people converged on the ring and tore the ring apart. And, they're literally, they had no time to test it. They slap it back together. And as the pyro is hitting for nine o'clock for the start of the live show, they're, they're jumping out of the ring and like off to the side so the camera doesn't pick them up. So I, Razor and I go to the ring untested and uh, he had a spot where you go to punch him. He'd hit you, block it and hit you off the ropes. Two, on the third time, he would clothesline you backwards over to the floor. And... Uh, you know, I know the fulcrum point of the top rope. I pull my arm up, pull my elbow up under my arm. That's the top rope. That's the height of a, of a, of a standard top rope uh, in, in wrestling business. When I tried to clear the rope, it, it had no give. And so it, when I went to roll back over it, it, I didn't clear. And so Scott did the right thing and pushed me. As I was upside down coming the other side, it felt like he football kicked me in the back. Something snapped me real fast and right in the spine. And I hit the floor and I'm like, son of a bitch, I'm thinking, why did that fucking guy kick me, you know? And I went to get up. I wasn't paralyzed, but if I told my lady to go here, it was going over here. It wasn't what I was telling it to do. And the referee, I forget who the referee was, came to the ropes and said, get in the fucking ring. I said, my fucking legs aren't working. And Scott came out and did the right thing. He said, uh, fuck it, let's just stop the match. I said, I, 
I just wanted out of it. It was my final week. I just wanted done with this bizarro world. And uh, I said, get me into the ring. We ruled in the ring. Vince had called for the razor's edge. And Scott goes, uh, uh, fuck it, uh, uh, you know, a uh, small package, a uh, small package. I'll go to slay me, I'll small package you. So no, do the razor's edge. And we argued for about a second. He didn't want to do it to me. And uh, so he finally did it. And now Scott can do it two ways. He can lay you down or he can spike you. And I've watched the replay a thousand times. He did his best to lay me down carefully. But when I hit that mat, Andrew, I, it felt like I was going to shit my kidneys out. It was so painful. And when they ruled me out, I had like a, like a carcass, just rolled me out. I plopped to the floor. I couldn't get up because my legs. They had two referees ran down and helped me back to the curtain. When I got through the curtain right at the gorilla position, they let me go, and I collapsed to the floor. And I had to crawl on my elbows in the Richmond Coliseum, probably about 100 yards, past all the production personnel. Not one person the entire way came to say, hey, Shane, what's wrong? Can I help you? And I was in a room dressing with Dustin Rhodes, and right as I'm on the floor going to push the door open, Dustin's pulling the door open, and he sees me. Oh, he helps me up, and I said, go get a doctor. There's something wrong with my back. It was excruciating pain. He came back with an EMT, and the EMT checked me over for 10, 15 minutes, and he said, you got a pretty good muscle spasm. And no diagnostics, no, no X-ray, no MRI or anything, just, just by you know, uh, uh, looking me over. And uh, so I went home that, the next day believing that I had a muscle spasm. I'd never had one in my back, so I had no idea what it felt like. All week long, I'm in pain. My doctor gave me a, a, a bottle of a Percocet or Vicodin or something. And I was saving because I had Friday night left. We had Thanksgiving that week. And then Friday night was in Spectrum, Saturday night in the garden. And I was done with WWF. And uh, I already knew I was going back to ECW. I was in this popcorn spot in both, both cards. So unimportant throwaway match. I worked with Savio Vega uh, Friday night. I was scheduled to work with him both nights. And... He gave me one super kick. It was the only bump I took in the match, and I couldn't get up. I had, like, climbed the ropes to get myself back to my feet. And uh, went back to the hotel room that night and was just in a ton of pain. Uh, through the course of the night, not at once, but through the course of the night, I took, uh, took 30 Percocets and drank a case of beer, and it didn't even touch the pain. We drove to the garden, and... Uh, uh, the whole way up the New Jersey Turnpike, every pothole was just like a, like a knife in my back. Uh, at the garden, you go to the fifth floor. I get off the elevator, the, the garden hallway, you get off the elevator down to this far end of the V, and the dressing rooms are all over on this side. When I went into the dressing room, uh, there was a doctor that I'd never seen before. Uh, Bret Hart was dressing on this side of the room. Uh, Glenn Jacobs, Isaac Yankum, then uh, uh, Kane was on the right side of the room, and there was nobody else in the room. And I. Went to sit down and the doctor called me over. So I walked over and I winced as I sat down in the chair. And what's wrong with you? I said, I got a muscle spasm in my back. So he gives me a physical, you know, typically the New York Commission will say, how many fingers do I have up? What's your middle name? When's the last time you wrestled? You're good to go. This guy gave me a, like a full legit physical. And at the end of the physical, uh, he said, 22 years as a commission doctor, I've never done what I'm about to do. I said, what's that? He said, I'm failing you, you can't wrestle. I said, Doc, this is my last night working with this jackass. I said, what's the worst thing that could happen? He said, you could end up in a wheelchair for the rest of your life. I said, well, that's the magic phrase. That, that's the one that gets my attention. So uh, what, what happened after that was truly bizarre because a few minutes later, uh, Tony Greer came into the room and at, said something to me like, uh, Dean, you don't want to wrestle for Vince tonight? Like, like it was a choice or something, you know? And... Uh, Few minutes later, I heard Vince yelling, "Get Dean Douglas in my office right this way!" And that was it. My my fuse snapped. You know, it was like that's the straw that broke the camel's back. I grabbed the coat, I'm gonna pull myself up, and I'm just gonna knock this fucker out because I've I've had this bullshit treatment long enough. So I walked in there, and he had a room full of all the agents. Blackjack Lonza was in there. Strongbow was in there. Skoland, Jim Ross, uh, I think uh, Pat Patterson was in there. There were like five or six guys in there. You know, he won't go in a room by himself anymore since Kevin Kelly beat the shit out of him. Kevin, Ke Kevin Kelly, if you're out there, by the way, listening, good job, my man. I wish you're, you're my favorite wrestler of all time for that. Uh, but uh, when I walked in, this doctor walked in, and uh, Vince, you know, Vince is a big guy, and he's an imposing guy, walked up, like, on the doctor, like, this close, looking down. The doctor was a tiny guy. Uh, and he 
asked the doctor what the problem was, and the guy said, uh, start talking to the medical ease, which I understood. Ben Stiles goes, stop, stop, stop. I'm one of these dumb fucks that, this is exactly what he said, I'm one of these dumb fucks that doesn't understand all that medical ease, so why don't you dumb it down for a dumb fuck like me, doc, so I can understand it? And the doctor said, okay, Mr. McMahon, this young man presents with uh, asymmetrical, meaning uh, 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 not balanced uh, reflexes, and that's indicative of either a broken back or a ruptured disc in his back. Barring diagnostics like an MRI or a CAT scan, I can't allow him to go to the ring tonight. So what's the worst that's going to happen? Vince asked him the same thing, and he told Vince the same thing. When he said he could end up in a wheelchair, Vince didn't even blink. He turned and looked at me and walked up to me this close. His chest was touching my chest. He said, Dean, do you agree with that diagnosis? And honestly, I, I, I put my hand on his chest and turned my head like this, but I couldn't, I couldn't look him in the face. I wanted to drop him. And I pushed away. I said, I'm not qualified to agree or disagree with that diagnosis. And when I said that, he did this little hissy fit dance like, like this in a, in a circle spun around and walked right towards me and thumped me into the shoulder on purpose, almost knocked me down. The doctor actually grabbed me and walked into the hall. Now, the doctor didn't see this because the doctor was facing me with his back to the door. I was facing the door. Vince walked in, you know, like ran out in the hallway, turned around and came back in and cut a promo on the doctor. And he said, uh, well, doc, you can, you can give yourself a pat on the back because you just fucked 25,000 of your fellow New Yorkers out of their hard-earned pay because you just fucked them out of the most important match on the card. Now, I know the doctor didn't get it, because he don't know what popcorn match is, but I got it. And so, a few minutes later, Arnold Scorn comes and finds me and says, uh, Dean, Vince wanted me to give you a verbatim message and proceeds to tell me what verbatim means. I said, I know what verbatim means, Arnie, just give me the message. And he was trying to remember it in pieces. He's going, Vince told me to tell you to get your fucking bag Get the fuck out of the garden and, uh, oh yeah, he doesn't need your motherfucking services anymore. Okay. And he went like this, looked up and down the hall to make sure that we could hear and he grabbed me by the elbow and pulled me in. See, those guys were all afraid of their shadows. You know, they say the wrong thing, they're going to get fired. And uh, he whispered to me, he said, if you ask me, Dean, you're doing the right thing, take care of your back. So I nudged with my elbow and I whispered back to him. I said, I always knew there was a reason I, I respected you, Arnie. And I walked down. My friend was waiting at the end by the elevator, w waiting for, uh, you know, for the match to end. And I'm walking down. He's looking at me like, you know, why are you leaving? So I started telling the story, and we get on the elevator. And as the elevator door is closing, I hear Vince Man yelling coming down the hall, Dean, Dean, Dean. The elevator got right there. He sticks his hands in and closed, uh, you know, stops the elevator door and opens back up. He goes, Dean, where are you going? Uh, you know, you got to appear tonight. And I said, well, I was given a verbatim message from you that was... I gave it the same way that Arnie gave it to me. I said, get my fucking bag, get the fuck out of the garden. You don't need my motherfucking services anymore. He went, oh, no, I didn't say that. He said, I said that. I didn't say that. And he you know, denied the whole thing to me. And then he said, uh, uh, you know, you, you're advertised. You at least got to make an appearance. And he goes, why don't you do one of those shoot promos you're supposed to be so famous for? I looked at my friend and I went, <laughs> okay. So I went out and got on the microphone, and I was not, of course, to cut the fucking music there. And so I got on the microphone. It took me a couple minutes to get into the rings, my back. And I got in to cut the fucking music, and the guys in the rings, I go on like this, you know. So I said, the Dean's got some good news, and I've got some, and I delivered like the franchise with the inflection and fuck the monotone voice. I said, I've got some good news and bad news. I'll give you the bad news first. I said, the bad news is for, and I wanted to use Vince's words against him again. I said, uh, the 25,000 of you New Yorkers that paid your hard-earned dollars to see a professional wrestler just got fucked because the only real wrestler on the car is not performing tonight. So that's the good news. I said, Vince McMahon and his cronies wanted me to wrestle. The guy, the, the doctor, by the way, was a world-renowned neurosurgeon named Dr. Richard Byrer, B-I-R-R-E-R. -R -E -R. And uh, said he and his cronies wanted me to wrestle against world-renowned neurosurgeon Dr. Richard Byrer's advice that I could end up in a, in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And I paused. And I paused and I said, and I told them they could kiss my fucking ass. I threw the microphone down and I fully expected somebody to take a shot at me coming through the curtain. So I walked through, you know, my hand ready to block and my fist clenched. I walked through the curtain. The backstage area is completely desolate, empty. There's not, I don't know what, to this day, I don't know where they went. I, I'd given my t shirt to Earl Hebner to hold. I came back and was hanging on a doorknob. So I took my t shirt, put it on, and put my robe in the bag and left. That was the last hour for WWF. And so that long-winded answer is response to that, if they would call, I have no desire to go back there.